Hello again, this is Emanuela. We are officially starting. Paul Fekete, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Emanuela. Uh, first of all, good afternoon to the uh, de delegates in uh, Geneva. And uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening uh, for those of you who may be joining on our Zoom connection uh, uh, from around the world. Uh, we're delighted to have you join our session today, uh, which is going to be a United States-sponsored thematic session on the WTO's role in enhancing food security. Uh, we have a really excellent program today uh, where we will be inviting members uh, to a discussion on how the WTO and its members can address global food security challenges through trade, innovation, and partnerships by examining a case study on Hello Tractor, which is a farm equipment sharing application that connects tractor owners with smallholder farmers who need tractor services in East Africa, and in particular, their partnership with John Deere, uh, which is a corporation in the United States, which you'll be hearing about more in just a few minutes. Uh, my name is Paul Fekete. Uh, I am the uh, Senior International Trade Advisor at the U.S. Agency for International Development, USAID, in Washington, D.C. Uh, I serve as the uh, coordinator uh, for much of USAID's uh, relationship uh, with uh, uh, WTO committees and work very closely with Emanuela Montanari-Stevens and our colleagues at USTR, you know, both in Geneva as well as in, 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 in Washington. Uh, we have a wonderful set of speakers this morning or this afternoon and want to uh, introduce them uh, in a brief fashion. Uh, first of all, uh, we will be joined uh, by David Bisbee, who serves as the Deputy Chief of Mission in Geneva, where he represents the United States as Deputy Permanent Representative to the World Trade Organization. In this capacity, Mr. Bisbee is responsible for managing USTR's Geneva office and for coordinating U.S. engagement across the WTO's committee structures and negotiating bodies. Uh, David assumed his current position in June 2019. And prior to relocating to Geneva, he served as Deputy and Assistant U.S. Trade Representative and as a Director in the Southeast Asia and Pacific Office. Uh, prior to joining USTR, David also served as the, in the Office of the Pacific Basin in the U.S. Department of Commerce and also worked with the World Bank in the Poverty Reduction and Economic Management Sector Unit for the East Asia and Pacific region. After David, uh, we'll have our speakers from our uh, colleagues at Hello Tractor. First of all, Jaheel Oliver will be speaking. Uh, Jaheel is the founder and CEO of Hello Tractor, an agricultural technology company that connects tractor owners with smallholder farmers in need of tractor services. At Hello Tractor, Jaheel is responsible for overall management and strategy. He's been honored with numerous awards for his work in social entrepreneurship, including being recognized by Foreign Policy Magazine as a top 100 global thinker and a World Economic Forum Circulars inaugural cohort member. He was appointed under the Obama administration to serve two years as a member of the President's Advisory Council on Doing Business in Africa, where he most recently chaired the Technology Subcommittee. Prior to Hello Tractor, Jahil worked in consulting and investment banking. After Jaheel, we'll be joined by Pritpal Singh with John Deere. Uh, Pritpal has 20 years of experience in leading sales, strategic planning, product marketing, and product management teams within the automotive and agricultural equipment and machinery sector. Pritpal has worked at John Deere for over a decade in various functions, including pricing, strategic marketing, channel development, and training. At present, he serves as head of sales for East Africa and the Middle East, focusing on the agricultural and construction and forestry equipment divisions. Pritpal is passionate about smallholders and emerging farmers, uplifting and improving their lives by helping to move them towards bankability and agribusiness success, focusing on Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and neighboring geographies to understand their pain points and how John Deere can best support to foster adoption of technology and promote mechanization. Pritpal developed a deep understanding of emerging markets, having lived and worked in India, Singapore, and now Dubai, and having traveled extensively in Southeast Asia, China, Africa, and the Me Middle East. Last but not least, uh, we'll be joined by a colleague of mine at USTR, Alex Kimani. Alex is a regional investment advisor in USAID, Kenya, and East Africa's Office of Economic Growth Office and Integration. In his role, he contributes to design, management, and coordination of initiatives related to the facilitation of private capital investment and projects which realize development outcomes in East Africa. 
Previously, he worked at the USAID East Africa Trade and Investment Hub, where he led and was involved in the design and execution of innovative strategies and activities to facilitate and accelerate finance and investment key economics in the Eastern Af Africa region. Before joining the development world, he worked as a credit manager and as business and, and business advisor at the Equity Bank Group Limited, facilitating lending and advisory support to the bank's corporate and SME clients in the region. Alex began his career as a financial analyst at the Industrial Promotion Services in Kenya Limited and Aga Khan Fund for Economic Development and Impact Investment Fund. So we have an outstanding group of uh, speakers, uh, which we'll turn to in just a moment. Uh, before we get underway, uh, just a couple of housekeeping uh, comments. Uh, for those of you uh, on Zoom, uh, please make sure to keep your uh, microphones muted and your cameras off. Uh, please note that due to uh, U.S. White House security protocols, the chat feature is not enabled uh, in this version of Zoom, but we will definitely be taking questions at the end of the presentations. Uh, so we will ask you to uh, raise your hand and uh, we will try to get to as many uh, questions as we possibly can. Uh, so with that, uh, let us uh, turn first uh, to uh, David Bisbee for some introductory comments. David, the floor is yours. Thanks, Paul, and good afternoon, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for what we know will be a fascinating presentation. Uh, today, we'll be hearing from an amazing panel of speakers who will tell a story that illustrates how innovation and entrepreneurship can be matched with digital and analog tools to overcome critically important challenges, such as food security, economic empowerment, including women's economic empowerment, technology transfer, and access to financing. It's also a story about the importance of partnerships and finding local level solutions that are both fit for purpose and drive innovation to shape the local environment to create a positive atmosphere for dynamic adaptation and adoption of technology and know-how. The story of Hello Tractor is on one level the story of a sharing app for agricultural equipment, touching upon many of the elements of the digitization of agriculture. It also illustrates the benefits of an advanced services economy that is providing farmers access to capital intensive and high-tech equipment, as well as transferring valuable skills to local technicians. This is a story about how innovation leads to empowerment, where well-performing farmers gain technical skills and capital resources in the gig economy to become tractor owners themselves. So what is the relevance of Hello Tractor to the WTO? At its core, Hello Tractor is a company that creates economic activity where there wasn't any before, either due to lack of capital resources, technical know-how, or both. We will soon hear directly from Hello Tractor's founder about the challenges he analyzed and the problems he is solving with respect to African agriculture. Underpinning the new economic activity Hello Tractor is creating, increased and more efficient agricultural cultivation, is the adoption of innovation and digitization of agriculture and an advanced services economy. The output of this economic activity is an agricultural surplus that itself can be traded. You will also hear a story about technology transfer and skills training, creation of economic opportunity, particularly for women, innovative financing mechanisms, and cross-border partnerships, all of which are important topics for many at the WTO. We want to recognize the governments of Kenya, Nigeria, and other countries that are accepting these types of new ways of doing business in new agricultural services. And we note that sometimes success comes not from government action, but from government restraint. New technologies like ride-sharing apps have been at, the, at times branded disruptive, and some countries have banned or restricted them. But with agricultural services on demand, like Hello Tractor, participating countries did not hold back innovation, and we're seeing the success of these policies through increased productivity and a path toward tractor ownership and entrepreneurism. And today we want to focus on these successful policy choices. We will also hear today from John Deere, one of America's most iconic brands, about their commitment to advancing technological innovations and local solutions through creative partnerships. I note that John Deere is not just an equipment manufacturer. In addition to being a leader in applying information technology to agriculture, 
The Hello Tractor case study illustrates how John Deere is growing its core business by investing capital in an overseas startup company, showing that even large multinational companies must be nimble and seize opportunities when they arise. We'll also hear from our USAID office in Kenya, which will share additional views on how the United States creates partnerships to solve development challenges and provides financing to support economic empowerment. We also want to recognize the Tata Corporation as a key partner in the success of Hello Tractor. Tata, the Indian multinational, has an extensive network of equipment and parts distributions in sub-Saharan Africa. Tata's experience in global and local supply chains reduces downtime and increases efficiency for the Hello Tractor system. It's another example of how we're all stronger when we work together. The discussion today is setting the stage for introducing the U.S. communication on food security in the WTO, and we invite everyone to take a look at our paper. And we also take note of recent Africa Group papers that seek to foster a more substantial dialogue on technology transfer and on private sector activities to promote innovation and technological adoption. We hope to continue to engage with African delegations and others to tell more of these stories and to learn from each other. I will now turn the program over to Jahil, and I believe we have a short video first. Thank you, David. And uh, yes, uh, we do have a video, and uh, let's uh, start with that. Today we are handing over five tractors to five tractor borrowers and uh, the initiative Tractors for Africa, which is implemented in partnership with Hello Tractor. Through this initiative, we are looking at um, getting to transform Africa's uh, way of doing agriculture by mechanizing and uh, adopting the best practices in the agriculture sector so that we can feed our people and we can also export the excess to other nations. Iti ndatinga mbao tumelekewa, imeleta change kubwa sana kwangu kama mkulima. You find most of the times, we are not able to prepare our farms on time due to lack of machinery for plowing. And uh, one thing that I want to appreciate from the Hello Tractors, I as a farmer, they have enabled me to earn a tractor that is not only going to benefit me in my farm, but this is also going to be a benefit to even my community. I have been a farmer for more than 20 years in Sayame. I'm also a FSC farmer service centre. I'm a TOT who is training farmers on CA, conservation agriculture and smart agriculture. I've done that for more than two years. And they have been booking farmers. I bring tractors from Weshiangishu. I use three tractors in a year. But today I'm happy because I'm having mine. I'm going to use mine, I'm going to promote my farmers. So we are going to come from small scale farmers to big farmers. Iu uwezo wa kupata tinga tinga, kwangu imekuwa na fu. Sababu siwe zipata hii milion tano yote, ni bebe ni ende ni nime tinga tinga mpia. I want to say thank you so much to Kelo Tractors because naweza kulipa mdogo mdogo wakati so with that, uh, let me turn the floor over to you, Jahil, uh, the founder and CEO of uh, Hello Tractor. Thank you, Paul, and thank you, everyone. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the, the short video. I think that's just a snippet of the work that Hello Tractor and our partners like John Deere have been doing in the markets to bring mechanization to a market that has been largely reliant upon manual labor. And that has created all sorts of challenges for the agricultural market in Sub-Saharan Africa and really across the emerging markets. If you think about farming within smallholder systems, many of our growers plant late and undercultivate their land because they don't have access to labor, given rapid urbanization and aging farm populations. Uh, and usually uh, 
machinery is well suited to fill that that labor gap but in our markets the adoption of tractors has been incredibly low and so hello tractor came in with a solution to that problem starting with uh, a farm equipment sharing application and fleet management tool for tractor owners to remotely monitor and manage their equipment but ultimately our goal is to create Africa as a sixth breadbasket. And that was a very ambitious goal when we started, but as we've grown over the years and built a model that uh, can scale commercially, and most importantly, because no company can do it on its own, brought in partners like John Deere with very unique capabilities to accelerate that growth, that ambitious goal has become less of um, more attainable. And it's more timely now coming out of the global pandemic um, where we, we saw a significant disruption in the global food supply chain. Uh, we now also have the war in Ukraine and the disruption of the Black Sea ports. And lastly, climate change, an ongoing challenge. Bringing more productivity to Africa is not just an African imperative, but now a global imperative. And our solution to that problem is uh, technology. And we started with uh, first a booking application and the ability of community-based agents to organize farmers in their community for tractor services. And that's really important in these smallholder environments because in order for a tractor to profitably service a smallholder farm, there needs to be economies of scale. And our booking agents help us reach economies of scale in each of our transactions by clustering demand and booking on behalf of farmers who are not, um, who haven't been traditionally digitized and are not digitally literate. But through this one-to-many relationship that Hello Tractor has with its booking agents who then subsequently work with large numbers of farmers, um, we've been able to digitize that last mile. And as these booking agents grow, they themselves can become tractor owners like you saw in the video. And I'll talk a little bit more about the tractor finance product in a bit. Now, once we have uh, farmers organized in our marketplace, we then build a tractor fleet management tool where farm equipment owners from tractor owners to combine harvesters and threshers can digitize that machine, remotely track and monitor that asset. It's a really important, really expensive asset in our market. So you want to be able to virtually monitor it and reduce incidents of fraud and machine misuse. And we do that through GPS and analytics that turn um, basic data points into insights for our tractor owners to know exactly where they should send their equipment at what time of the year and monitor how much work was completed, fuel consumption uh, and maintenance needs of the tractor. And lastly, uh, to inject more liquidity in the market and as both Paul and David mentioned, to increase entrepreneurship opportunities for our booking agents, these agents can now become tractor owners through our innovative page. You go tractor finance product. This product rewards any booking agent within our marketplace with the opportunity to become a tractor owner through a product that matches the cash flows from the tractor with a loan to finance the tractor to service the demand that they've originated in the booking application. And we're simply underwriting the data in the booking app. We don't need previous bank history, credit history, because most of our customers at this tier of the market don't have that. But innovative underwriting has allowed us to deploy millions of dollars into the base of the pyramid, collect on that, while reaching hundreds of thousands of farmers with this newly financed equipment. So that's very exciting to see. But once we started to finance tractors, we, we also started to recognize opportunities to work more closely with our partners like John Deere and John Deere dealers like Tata. And that's where we decided 
to launch a hub strategy where we place low cost containers in close proximity to our tractor owners to ensure they have maintenance, spare parts, and other value added inputs for their growers in close proximity to the market. No longer do tractor owners have to travel far distances to access these opportunities. And it's this hub strategy that's unlocked a tremendous amount of value for our partners to plug in and rethink things like the spare part supply chain and training technicians and employing young people as technicians at the last mile to ensure every single finance tractor is going to be properly supported with technicians and spares to keep that machine uptime and minimize unplanned downtime. The hubs also provide a stopping point for our farmers to access inputs. Once we put a hub in place and every single hub has a minimum of 20,000 commercial smallholder farmers operating in the vicinity in a five square kilometer radius of the hub. And that's a great channel for our other partners like a OCP to sell their fertilizer. Just this week, we have OCP doing offering our farmers, those 20,000 farmers around our hub, in Kasumu, Kenya, um, free soil testing. And they'll be selling custom fertilizer blends to the farmers being serviced from that hub location. We also provide training from the hub, both training of new technicians, training of operators who are responsible for driving the tractors who have traditionally there was no certification program. We launched that in partnership with John Deere to get tra tractor operators certified and then continue to grow our networks of booking agents who have been trained through the hub and can now book their way towards tractor ownership. Climate smart mechanization is a priority for us. So we also train our farmers on the benefits of climate smart mechanization. And then we offer the ability of our tractor owners to rent climate smart implements like rippers, as well as direct seeders and no-till planters to service their farmers. This reduces the burden of our tractor owners to have to own this expensive equipment that can be almost as expensive as a tractor. They can actually rent the implements and pay on a per use basis, similar to our pay as you go tractor finance product, reducing the working capital needs for our tractor owners, but making it equip that equipment available as our farmers become educated on these new practices, they can actually access the services from their tractor owners. And then lastly, uh, we, we've been very, working very closely with John Deere and our dealer partners to ensure every single hub has trained technicians certified with access to spare parts to make sure the life cycle of the tractors is closely managed and downtime is minimized. Today, we have uh, over 4,000 tractors on our platform. Each of these owners pay us an annual SAS fee to access our fleet management solution, uh, as well as access our marketplace. And that marketplace has over 630,000 smallholder farmers growing on 3.5 million acres of land. And each of those smallholder farmers have reported an increase of, on average, 138% increase in income. And we expect that number to grow further through our hub strategy as we introduce other value-added inputs and other opportunities to mechanize further across the production cycle, including climate smart and conservation agriculture. So that's Hello Tractor in a nutshell. I look forward to answering any questions that you all have. Thank you so much for the platform. Thanks very much, Jaheel. Uh, before we Thank move you. to our next speaker, uh, Prithpal Singh from John Deere, uh, we have another uh, video that we just wanted to share very briefly. And uh, let me uh, bring that uh, to you right now. Over the last two weeks at the Igaton Joro Operator Training Program, 
We have taken them through the basic skills of how to handle the tractor. They have learned how to plow, how to harrow, you know, up to the very end of it. And today, I proudly say that they're leaving this place as confident tractor operators. I'm here because of Hello Tractor, which I had about it on Facebook. I tried it and I was enrolled in this program. I've been doing this job of mine for 20 plus years and it's a man-related job. It's quite tough, but it depends on what you like. So if you like such things, join Hello Tractor. I want to own a tractor, do the, the full operations from plowing to harrowing, planting and harvesting. And I want to learn more and keep learning more. Hello Tractor, thanks for empowering our generation and uh, through my dad, I hope I'll be as a role model to my fellow young generation to also gain the interest to acquire the content and the knowledge on this sector of agriculture. And the ladies, don't shy away from this. Don't be scared of the men. Don't be scared of, be scared of the big tractors. Nowadays we have good technology and I've been using old school equipment and currently from what I've learned the last two weeks is very good. These tractors are easy to handle, easy to maintain and you can control the machinery on your own without seeking other people's hands. Hello Tractor continues to commit support to smallholder farmers. We shall organize for additional operator trainings. We shall continue upskilling the smallholder farmers and the whole ecosystem of spare parts, technical support, operator, to ensure there is food security in our country and there is maximum revenue generation for smallholder farmers. So with that, uh, let me turn the floor to uh, Pritpal Singh uh, from John Deere. Uh, Pritpal, the floor is yours. Thank you, Paul. And let me just share my screen. Here we go. So thanks again and uh, good morning, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, I will be briefly talking about uh, how John Deere has partnered with Hello Tractors to help in this journey, which is about empowering farmers and also to improve the food security in, in sub-Saharan and so, in fact, in entire Africa. So uh, to just to begin with, you know, what or who is John Deere? Uh, I think we have, uh, we are, John Deere is, for those of you who are not familiar with John Deere, so we are one of, uh, we are world's largest producer of ag and construction equipments. Uh, largely, our business is divided into, into three main segments, uh, which is uh, production and precision ag. Uh, in short, that is about all uh, large equipments, uh, you know, everything that is to do with precision ag equipments, is all clustered under production and precision ag. Then is small ag and turf. Small ag and turf comprises of uh, everything to do with small tractors. And this is where exactly we are working with Hello Tractors on in the small ag business. And this also includes some of our mid tractor range and also in, in our turf and uh, uh, mainly turf and the golf equipments. And the third business unit is about construction and forestry. Uh, these are all uh, bigger construction equipments, and we've been uh, playing a pretty dominant role in U.S., but also now we are trying to expand outside of U.S. Outside of it, we do have certain enabling functions, which is in terms of intelligent solutions group, aftermarket customer support, John Deere financials, and also power systems. Well, now to come to the, the topic of, of uh, John Deere, 
in in Africa and Middle East, and that is where I do represent. Uh, I'm heading the sales for for East Africa and Middle East geography. So why Africa? Just a glimpse of it. So if you really talk about Africa overall, uh, it's roughly about a tractor market of sixteen to seventeen thousand annually, and the mechanization rate in this market is is. Uh, is much lower at 4%, which means that there is an opportunity for us to grow, an opportunity for us to promote mechanization. As far as John Deere is concerned, so we've been present in Africa since 1962. We do have a pretty rich uh, history in Africa. Uh, we are headquartered in Johannesburg, South Africa, and we do have a satellite office in Nairobi, Kenya. And, and we have our sales and marketing representatives, uh, people who are working in Kenya office, who are serving entire East Africa geography. Uh, we do leverage our uh, John Deere financing solutions. So unlike in other parts of the world where John Deere financing is directly uh, linked to, to the financial solutions, both in retail and wholesale markets, here in Africa, we work with our partners to provide such solutions. And, and, and the alliance model that we have with our partners, we've, we've, we've almost more than 30, 35 banking partners uh, who we work with, and we ensure that we provide the right solutions customized for each and every market. We operate through our authorized dealerships. John Deere is not that it comes directly into the market. We have our dealers who represent us in the markets, and that's where we operate in. And I have seen uh, some of our uh, participants here uh, online who have joined in are from India. So the Hello Tractor solution that that you have seen, uh, it 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 is categorized as part of our small tractor business unit, which has a manufacturing facility in India in Pune. So a whole lot of these tractors come from Pune into African market. And lastly, finally, uh, John Deere is, is in, in order to, for the topic, we are now, we've been, uh, Deere is an appointed member of US President's Advisory Council on doing business in Africa. It's a 26 member panel uh, for the US companies who advise US interagency interagencies on how to better support two-way U.S.-Africa trade and investments. So DEER heads up the Agriculture and Food Security Subcommittee and is currently making recommendations to the executive branch on ways to boost this area. Uh, so this is where uh, we, have, we do have a smart campaign. I'll talk about it in a bit. But this is where John Deere and Hello Tractors neatly tee up. So, so what exactly is Smart Campaign? Smart Campaign talks about the solution for small or marginal farmers or the contractors who necessarily do not have a banking history or who are unbankable. And how, through our solutions, we promote the mechanization. And if we have the right solutions, not only do we mechanize, but we also do promote higher yields. And what exactly do these uh, small or marginal holders need? They need an access to financing solutions. That's where A comes in, and it's critically important for us. And as manufacturers, our equipments that we provide in the market should have a very high reliability at a cost that they can afford. We do not want that our equipments that we supply should break every now and then. So that is why it's, it's uber important for us to ensure that we put in a lot of durability and reliability into these equipments. And of course, the last part is T, which talks about technology and education. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to get the right technology to the farmers, but more important, it is to ensure that we continuously embark on educating the trainers, the operators. Jay Heal talked about education. I will talk about how, how John Deere is making sure that we continuously keep on educating the operators. Because if they are educated, they will ensure 
that they operate the equipments in the in the in the in a, in a most optimized and efficient way now this is you know a bit uh, you know counterintuitive many smallholder farmers in africa they do not need yesterday's solutions what lot of ag equipment manufacturers have done they have provided or they've continuously provided equipments that are outdated but but in africa and my experience they need same same solutions as a farmer would need anywhere else in the world and because of which you know we've come up with not only with the right equipment but also how do we ensure it it, it goes up with the right implements and it provides the the right kind of efficiencies that they need what you see on the picture here is is a is an assembly facility that we have in Ethiopia, and I'll talk about both these case studies. And, and why is this assembly facilities? Because we want to ensure that we provide the tractors to the farmers at the lowest possible cost point. And for us to do that, we have to look at every aspect of the business, be it in terms of the logistics, and also be it in terms of how do we ensure that it, it, it reaches them uh, as fast as possible. So what is this public-private partnership that we have with, with uh, uh, in Ethiopia that we're talking about? We, we've named it as Kegna. Uh, Kegna is basically, it's, a, it's an established public-private partnership in the region of Oromia, uh, which is the biggest region in Ethiopia. And, and this is between the government of, of uh, Oromia, the regional government, and our dealer, which is GetUp Engineering. And this has been established since 2017, and and with a with a short capital of of 50 million bur. Uh, the the government owns 51 percent of the partnership, and our dealership, which is private, owns 49 percent of the partnership. Now, what is the scale of of uh, uh, in terms of the access that we have? Oromia has roughly about 286 square kilometers of land. 88.7 million hectares of land, and of which irrigated is roughly about 1.1 million hectare. Uh, if we talk about total tractors that are available in the region, is roughly about 5,000 tractors, and John Deere has 36% of market share in that. Uh, what is the intention? What is the main objective of establishing this? The main objective of establishing this public-private partnership is to transform the existing traditional farming system to a mechanized agriculture um, by supplying the right ag machineries. Uh, we have seen that not only has it helped us to to augment the mechanization, but also impact a lot in terms of the yield of the farmers. Because we are supplying high quality equipment at a price which is very competitive for the smallholders. And, and not only that, through this instrument of public-private partnership, we've been able to introduce the new technology, technology that can help them uh, uh, you know, in terms of gauge the health of the tractor, but also in terms of knowing where exactly is the tractor, what exactly is tractor doing, and how exactly is the tractor behaving. Just so that if they can measure that, they are in much better position to influence how to utilize the tractor. Improving farm efficiencies and, and, and helping it to, in terms of reducing their cost of operations, and also ensuring that their payback is on time. Through this uh, public-private partnership, we've been on a, on, a, on a last eight years basis, almost able to see it in 2,300 tractors. In fact, this year, in 2023, I think we will have a highest sales because the demand in the region of Oromia is so strong that it is taking us time to serve the market in there. Now, there's another example, which we work with US AI, USAID in terms of in same region in Ethiopia, 
on how can we, uh, in terms of our alliances and in terms of how can we, uh, you know, increase the productivity of maize and wheat farmers. Now, in this example, I will talk about the training. I will talk about how it's important to train the operators just so that they can operate the equipment much more efficiently. Now, in Ethiopia, the objective of 3AG was twofold. One is to increase the productivity of maize farmers and wheat farmers by, by looking at uh, yield increases and adoption of efficiencies, or being more efficient. And second is to increase the efficiencies of uh, wheat markets by reducing post-harvest losses, increasing sales, and increasing investments in, in, in maize and wheat uh, value chain. You can see in the picture on the right, uh, there is a woman operator sitting in there, and, and then there's a person in, in John Deere wearing a John Deere cap. He's from, uh, he's the trainer, he's from GetApp uh, dealership. He's trying to train them in terms of how to operate the equipment. And we are finding more and more women operators are getting increasingly uh, gravitating towards, towards tractor. They want to drive the tractor and they want to themselves take on the farming. Uh, now, in a bit, a little bit more in terms of the 3AG project here, uh, looking at the bottom left uh, in terms of the Kegna facilities. So what we have done is we have licensed a certified training center operator. So each, uh, the moment you get a license, which means that at any given point in time, we can certify 40 operators on a single tractor and we can certify six operators on a single combine at a given point in time. Uh, we've at least six remote service centers that are established in, in three major regions. Uh, we have delivered 30 tractors to Tigray region through establishing the RSCs currently. And Deer and Dealer, they've conducted combined optimization trainings in December and May. And through partnership with Hello Tractors, over 130 tractors are fitted with the kits that they have in terms of to improve the overall fees and revenue out of it. Uh, well, I can talk a lot about this uh, partnership that we have, and you can also see how Koteva is, is on board with us, along with Hello Tractors, and our implementation partner on the ground is ACDI, Voka. They are the ones who are doing implementation. And we plan to expand these, these licensed certified training centers in the entire region of Ethiopia, uh, just so that we can train more and more operators on how to drive these uh, equipment safely and how to ensure that they get maximum out of these equipments. So I'm really excited in terms of the direction that we are heading into. I'm really excited how we are partnering with Hello Tractors to ensure that we are promoting the right mechanization solutions in the market. Uh, this is the last slide I have. You can see in the pictures here, a visit to the Kegna assembly. This is an assembly uh, facilities uh, behind. And, and US embassy officials, ACDI and VOCA, project officials, our directors, dealers, and dealer representatives are there on the ground. And on the right bottom, you can see, this is the delivery of the detractors in Tigray region that we gave it to them. So there's a lot that is happening in this space, and I'm more than welcome to, to have you whenever you visit here, you know, we can show you around how John Deere is working through along with Hello Tractors to promote mechanization in this part of the world. So with that, uh, I'm going to hand it over to, to Paul. Thanks for giving this opportunity. Chris Paul, thank you very much for, for your excellent presentation, your overview of all of the activities that uh, John Deere is uh, involved in. Uh, we at USAID have been uh, very uh, proud of our role in working with John Deere as well as with Hello Tractor. And to talk a little more about that, uh, I'll now turn the floor over to Alex Kimani, who is my colleague in the mission in Kenya and Nairobi, who can speak a little more about uh, the, the role USAID has played in catalyzing uh, this, uh, these efforts. So Alex, the floor is yours. 
Thank you, Paul. Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for this opportunity just to share a glimpse of what we are doing. Uh, with the gentleman who spoken before, um, I think I would only go into just discussing uh, just an illustration of how we're making um, things happen. And so I'll give you an illustration of uh, what we're doing in Kenya and East Africa. Uh, we run a program, a five-year program called the Kenya Investment Mechanism, whose target is to unlock finance and investment for enterprises. Um, the, the essence of the activity actually just to uh, activate um, private sector to underserved markets, addressing uh, the gaps where the people with uh, the people with the resources are looking for opportunities, and the people with the ideas and businesses are looking for funds, and therefore we. Um, avail resources to make uh, to bridge that gap and also um, support the necessary reforms that uh, will allow the movement of capital. Um, under the Kenya Investment Mechanism, uh, which has been running since um, 2018 and is just about to wind up. Alex, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry yes. to interrupt, but do you want to share your screen, the presentation? Sorry, I thought it was sharing. Uh, let me see. Uh, sorry about that. You let me know when you can see it. Just let me. Okay. You can see it now. Yes, I can. Thank you. My apologies. Um, so yes, yeah, so I was saying our. Project ran, uh, the Kenya Investment Mechanism has been running since 2018 and is about to wind up. Um, and we have been operating an, inc an incentive fee model to motivate both financial institutions and business advisors um, to move to support opportunities in underserved market segments. Um, on one hand, with the financial institutions, um, helping them, uh, encouraging them uh, to venture into underserved markets and giving them um, bon uh, incentives, uh, financial incentives uh, to lend to certain places, to certain sectors. Uh, and we have seen this uh, unlock a lot of financing, which I will show you in the next slide. And you could see that they find they have, over a period of time, having gotten comfort to that certain sectors, they've uh, continued to lend even without the incentives, and they have adapted their lending models um, to because they have appreciated the opportunities. On the other side, uh, working with the advisory firms to help companies uh, such as Hello Tractor with transaction structuring, uh, seeking out finances. Uh, uh, making applications, uh, connecting with investors, conducting due diligence, and other things that they need to access capital. And so, uh, over those five years, we've uh, managed to mobilize uh, $620 million uh, of investments. Uh, 314 has been out of the work with financial institutions and 274, uh, 77 uh, through the work that we have done uh, with advisory firms. Therein, uh, you see the 30 million, that is work we are doing with uh, pension funds in Kenya. Um, you know, pension funds hold a lot of funds uh, that will be deployed to help our economies. And so, uh, of course, out of the 621 million, you'll see the distribution across sectors from energy to horticulture. Um, you'll, and given, you'll see livestock and dairy just to just state the position of agriculture in our economies. And so, with regards to Hello Tractor, at least um, you know, Jahil has already spoken a lot about it, and uh, my brother Pripal as well. Uh, and so, specifically in 
this case, uh, the Kenya Investment Mechanism on Kim in short, uh, offer transaction support advisory to help uh, Hello Tractor raise the money that they need to do what they are doing. Uh, also to help the model, do a financial model of uh, the pay as you go uh, mod uh, offering, uh, connecting them with investors and helping with uh, in, uh, negotiations. Uh, and currently, you know, the discussions to help uh, support training of operators. I think Pripal talked a lot about that, the necessity for capacity building with the leading uh, Kenyan agricultural university called Igjaton. And one interesting bit uh, is the work we have done uh, under the pay-as-you-go model. And this has enabled uh, the company to avail uh, much needed equipment to farmers and structuring it in a way that they are able to um, finance uh, the acquisition uh, in line with their cash flows. And this, uh, in our view, unlocks endless opportunities. Uh, and especially we are seeing the interesting bit is that women are actually taking more uh, a good part. And I think we saw that in the videos. So out of this work, we have helped uh, Jahil and Hello Tractor raise some significant amount of funds, uh, which they have been deploying. And we are proud of the work so far. And so we'd say uh, over 618,000 and farmers have been impacted. Um, the relation that with, of that uh, with uh, food security cannot uh, be overstated. Um, there's also increased ownership uh, for smallholder farmers who couldn't have uh, had that opportunity. And of course, uh, women, especially the youth, women and youth have gotten an opportunity for entrepreneurship where they would acquire the tractors and deploy them, uh, creating jobs. Um, and so we'd say, yes, we are glad to help a Hello Tractor mechanize agriculture one farm at a time. I'll post there and we'll be on, the stand, on standby for any questions that anyone may have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alex, and thanks for your excellent overview of uh, USAID's role. Um, we've had an excellent set of presentations from Jahil, from Pritpal, uh, from you, Alex, and I uh, want to thank uh, all the speakers uh, uh, for your contributions. Um, we have a few minutes uh, left uh, for questions and answers, and perhaps with everyone's indulgence, we can run a few minutes over uh, if there are sufficient uh, interest in, in, in posing questions. I am afraid that I can't quite see the S1 room to see if anyone's hand is raised there, but I will rely on my uh, colleague, Emanuela, if there is any questions in the room. And if you're on the Zoom connection, uh, please raise your hand and uh, we'll uh, turn to you. So uh, uh, any questions uh, to pose to our speakers? Thank you, Paul, and this is Emanuela from S1 Room. So I'm monitoring, and as you said, I invite colleague to, um, uh, who joined the event on uh, in, on Zoom to raise their flags if they have questions. We also have received uh, from um, a few colleagues, we have some break, ice-breaking questions, so we can also start with some of those if I don't oh. see any. Hands. All right, well, let me, let, let, let me take uh, the moderator's prerogative to ask uh, the first question, and, and this one I'll pose both to uh, Prithpal and uh, Jahil. Um, you've spoken about uh, the uh, collaborative uh, effort uh, that John Deere and the Hello Tractor have been working on for quite some time, uh, but I wanted to focus a little more, if possible, on some of the challenges, some of the regulatory and legal challenges that might have been faced uh, as you put this uh, public-private partnership together. Uh, could you speak a little about what those challenges were and uh, what sort of recommendations you would have for regulators in terms of their encouraging uh, similar efforts of this kind in the future? Uh, so perhaps, Jahil, if I can turn it first to you and then perhaps to you, Paul. Well, obviously, and thank you for that question, Paul. Access to financing is a huge hurdle in our markets. The capital markets are quite shallow. and reaching smallholder farmers who are typically unbanked is has traditionally been thought uh, impossible from, from a commercial perspective. In fact, less than, I think the statistic is less than 2% of commercial bank lending in Africa goes to agriculture and uh, smallholder farming is some subset of that. And so the, the 
from a regular from a regulator's perspective um ways to de-risk this really important very strategic segment of the economy is going to be key uh agriculture is 40 percent of the continent's gdp 60 percent of the workforce so it's strategically important but in order for capital to flow uh, risk needs to be covered. Now, what we were able to do with John Deere and John Deere Financial on a facility that was uh, pioneering was uh, secure $5 million of commercial bank lending uh, from one of the larger commercial banks here in Kenya to finance these traditionally unbanked entrepreneurs, but leveraging uh, the credit guarantees from John Deere, an investment grade, AAA rated uh, corporation. Now, most people within the ecosystem don't have access to that sort of credit enhancement. So from a regulator's perspective, identifying ways to replicate that across broader swaths of the agricultural economy, I think is going to be really important to unlock out. And, and just to add on to what Jahil has said, I can't emphasize enough on this. Uh, what we are facing on the ground is, is basically access to Forex, along with you know these smallholders definitely, uh, they are not bankable. So, so with these facilities, what Jahil is trying to talk through is, is what makes them bankable. But even after that, for us to get equipments into the market, we're not finding enough forex, and that lead, or that is leading to a lot more delays. So if if that's not the case, I can tell you, the mechanization, the rate at which we are seeing mechanization, we can almost triple that if, if we do have those right, uh, uh, you know, the forex that is available in the country for them. So that is a real challenge uh, that we are facing on the ground. Thank you very much, Jahil and Prit Paul. Um, we have time for perhaps one more question, if there is any, uh, either in S1 or online. Uh, yes, Paul, we have one question from the room, and I, I will ask the uh, colleague in the room to take the floor directly. Thanks. Um, thank you very much for what is an excellent event. My name is Doa Abdelmotal. I'm from the WTO Secretariat, the Agriculture and Commodities Division. I have a question for you, um, Jahil. So one of the things we negotiate in the WTO is something called trade facilitation, which allows um, products to cross borders, goods to cross borders faster, cutting red tape, improving customs procedures, et cetera. What can you tell us about um, your tractors crossing borders in Africa? Um, what does what does that crossing look like? What are the hurdles? What are the things we can do to improve things for you? Thank you. Thank you, and that's an awesome question. In fact, our tractors cross borders all the time. Uh, the borders in the markets that we operate in are quite porous, and particularly in East Africa, where we see much more fragmentation geographically in the markets. Um, we see our tractors throughout the year uh, migrate from Kenya to Uganda to Tanzania, Rwanda, uh, quite a bit. In fact, we had to build capabilities into our tech stack to allow for tracking of these tractor fleets across borders. So every single tractor GPS monitoring comes with an international SIM card that can roam across country networks as those machines move. Um, to facilitate that further, um, a lot of it, uh, from my perspective, and I'm, I'm far from the expert here, but a lot of it, you know, a lot of our tractor drivers and their licenses are, are not transferable. I also think maybe even a more pressing challenge is the free flow of food across border as well. Each of our hubs has a production system focus. So we have rice hubs, wheat, sorghum, et cetera, et cetera. 
And the countries that we operate in tend to enjoy competitive advantages within specific production systems. And we think a big part of the food security story is having countries focus on crops where they enjoy competitive advantages and establish stronger regional trade relationships um, to reduce the need for imported food from outside the region. But certainly also machine movement and the liquidity of machines across the region is gonna be key. Some of that is licensing. Uh, but then there are also some other considerations, which again, I'm not, I'm not the expert on this, a fantastic question. Thank you, Jaheel. Um, last, uh, last call for a question before we move. Yes, Rodolfo, followed by um, uh, by um, Elizabeth Leonardi from USDA. Um, hello, and thank you for these presentations. Um, I had two questions. I'm not an expert on this topic, but I I wanted to know what's the in a in a piece of land when you uh, introduce a tractor. What would be the increase in the production? Uh, if everything, what would be the range in increase of having a tractor or not? And the other question, I am a bit familiar uh, about the situation in Kenya, and I understand one of the main issues is actually uh, water. Uh, is there any any way to approach uh, this uh, problem, like in a more jointly uh, effort with the tractors, but also tackling even before at the water? Thank you. Yeah, and I, should I take a stab at that? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, for, first of all, from a from a water resource management perspective, the introduction of things like ripping technology into our growers' field to break the hard pan, increase soil moisture, and even encourage our farmers to keep more crop residue on the field to maintain soil moisture in drier times, particularly given that we're in the third year of, of droughts, is really important. So educating the growers on climate smart technologies and then through our financing mechanism, ensure that that equipment is made available is, is really key and something that we spend a lot of time on. About a quarter of our portfolio in East Africa is doing climate smart agriculture. And that might, that might seem small, but that's huge. That's, that's 25% of the portfolio receiving climate smart mechanization services that were thought to be uh, a domain for donor funded projects. Now we do work very closely with groups like um, the Farm to Market Alliance um, and USAID and funded projects to ensure that farmer behavior change and education is the cost of that is offset with some of our partners and their support. Uh, but then making sure the capital is available is key and, and it's responsible water resource management, right? Because we want our farmers to be successful today and into the future. And going back to the problem, the, the question around productivity in increases, just having access to a tractor allows you to plant at about a third of the cost at 40 times faster. So if you pick a production system like rice, every single day you plant late, you're losing about a point to a point and a half in yield. Right. So depending on the availability of, of tractors and or labor, you could be planting 15 to to a month late, which is significant yield loss. Our customers, we measure profitability more than productivity and our customers report back 138 percent increase in profits just from having access to one form of mechanization land preparation. And over half, 55% of our customers receive that for the first time because of Hello Tractor. So it's a huge profitability gain, productivity gain. And of course, you got kids now able to go to school, right? Agriculture is the biggest contributor to ch child labor. You don't have to pull your kids out of school to prepare the lands when you have access to tractors. So there's a lot of spillover benefits there as well. Thanks for the question. Okay, now we have another question from Elizabeth Leonardi, USDA. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for the presenters and for sharing this this story. It's really, really interesting. I so my question was actually about climate smart agriculture and to better understand the demand for it from farmers in Kenya. 
And I guess another question that I have on that, so I think it's really already been answered, but I was curious just about that particular piece and training, training farmers on new, new technologies, new management approaches, climate smart approaches. Are you, are you working with governments or do you see action by governments to take on some of this training burden or do you see the private sector doing most of the training or seeking out that information themselves. So I was kind of curious about the partnership with government on extension or training services. Thanks. Thanks, Elizabeth. Uh, we work, um, I don't know, if, did you want me to answer that one, Paul? I don't want to hog the mic here. No, I, it's either Jaheel or Chris Paul. Yeah, please go ahead, either one of you. Chris Paul, you want to jump in? I don't want to. No, so uh, we are uh, right now, what we are doing is we are doing in our own uh, capacity to uh, to ensure that we train more and more operators, at least on, on our equipments, you know, on, on the equipments that are green. Uh, but we are also actively working with, with the government in Kenya, you know, if they can put up something or some sort of a facility where they can they can train many more operators because because the reach the capacity that the government has uh, we can't even match it and if they're on board then probably we can we can exploit it ten times uh, of what we are doing today uh, we are going we are ensuring that you know we because this is uh, what I term it as these are R intensive. Uh, trainings, you know, you have to put in a lot many hours. You have to put in a lot, much, lot many efforts to ensure that the operators are trained in the right way. Uh, the amount of effort it requires is not only in terms of training them, but also a complete walk around, know how, basic checks, basic maintenance, how to maintain. You know, besides everything, let's assume if they do not do the regular checks for maintenance on the equipment, the efficiencies can drop by 50%. So we have to make sure that we continually engage with them, continually operate, uh, but but uh, we're trying to work with the government, but we would want it even more. We would want if they can come forward because what they bring in is they can bring in, they can bring in a lot of capacity, which we do not have right now at the moment. Thank you very much, and uh, I, I'm afraid that uh, we've uh, exceeded uh, the time that we had allocated to this program, but I hope that uh, through the excellent presentations that we've heard, uh, we've been able to uh, stimulate a little more thought about the ways in which to use the uh, digitization, uh, innovation, and technology uh, in terms of promoting uh, food security. I'd very much like to thank our speakers, uh, Pritpal Singh, Jaheel Oliver, and Alex Kamani. I'd also like to thank uh, my USTR colleagues, and particularly uh, Emanuela Montanari-Stevens, who was uh, doing the heavy lifting in terms of putting this program together. Uh, so thanks to you all. I hope that we will be able to continue this conversations in the hallways and uh, elsewhere. And uh, with that, uh, I'll bring and this program fact, Paul, to a conclusion. Just to jump on you on this point, um, in order to build on this wonderful conversation that I hope we jump started today, I'd like to give the floor uh, to um, our deputy uh, mission uh, director, uh, uh, David Bisbee, who has a few final thoughts. And Very with good. that, then we can close, if you don't mind. Thanks. Sorry, I'll be brief. I, I just hope that we have delivered on, on what we promised uh, today. I think what we heard was uh, food security, uh, climate adaptation, innovative financing, uh, dynamic development solutions and public-private partnerships, digital innovations, transforming livelihoods, women's economic empowerment, technology transfer, and good old-fashioned investment in, in hardware. And so I, I think what we were trying to show it with our paper and with this event is that uh, food security spans all aspects of what we do here at the WTO, and, and we should be looking in each and every nook and cranny of, of our work here, whether it is in the digital space, whether it is an agriculture committee, whether it is in trade facilitation committee, um, for ways in which we can support a, an ecosystem of, of food security. And, and also, I think, bring home that we all repeat that development is central to, to the work of the WTO. 
but I'm not sure that we really mean it. And we really need to look at the innovation and the dynamism that's going on in the development space, um, because that brings us much closer to the problems and the challenges that that countries are actually facing, and also the solutions that are out there. Um, and we shouldn't be reinventing the wheel, but we can learn from these experiences and build upon it and contribute back um, to enhancing and making sure that our policies support um, the activity that's underway. So um, please take a look at our paper where we stand ready to work with any um, partner on additional experience sharing programs to actually give us a front row seat, whether it is a view from the field, a view from the factory, Factory, um, a view from the fishing trawler, where, where whatever uh, it, it needs to be, uh, we very much want to bring real-world problems here uh, where we can debate them and discuss and find some solutions together. So thank you again to all of our um, all of our panelists. I think this was fantastic, and um, hopefully we all go home a little bit happier uh, and a little bit more uh, enthused than than we started this morning. But thank you. David, thanks for those great uh, summary comments. And uh, with that, uh, we'll bring this program to a conclusion. Uh, thanks again to all of the participants and all the attendees and uh, have a good rest of your day.